Hello everybody, this is Ian Beckles and welcome back to In The Trenches. Hopefully everybody's having a wonderful week. Uh, I'm going to do a little Buccaneer talk today, a um, little NFL talk. I was in Indianapolis a couple weeks ago for the NFL Combine, so I'll talk to you about that experience. It was an interesting experience, it really was. It, uh, I'd never been to the Combine other than participating in 19, that would have been 1990. Um, so the NFL hit me up and they said, Hey, all you legends, they call us legends are guys that played before. If anybody wants to go to the combine, you come hang out and, you know, we'll take care of, they have a lounge that everybody can hang out in. It was real cool. Um, the combine itself, the, the testing and stuff was really, really boring. Okay. Uh, when I was there wondering what the hell I was doing there. But I got a chance to meet up with some really cool people and had some good conversations and, and got a lot done. So we'll definitely talk about that as well. If anybody wants to hit me up on social media, it's uh, Ian underscore Beckles. And I do that on Instagram. I'm mostly an Instagram person. So hit me up on that. So, um, listen, our Buccaneers are at work, okay? Our Buccaneers are at work, but it's not, it's not good work. They have to do whatever they can to get under that cap, and they've been maneuvering, and they're not going to stop. Manu- they're not going to stop maneuvering. They knocked off, I think, forty-four million or whatever it was. They're right on the on the cusp of getting under. They're going to get under. It's not a problem. The problem is now. How do you get better? That's the problem. Okay, it's not like this is a Super Bowl team from last year that you maybe have to cut a couple people. This was an eight and ten team from last year. Not trending up, trending down from eight and ten. All right, you got it. There's restructurings going on, and let me tell everybody about the the word restructure. Okay, it means nothing to us fans. It means absolutely nothing. The players aren't sacrificing. It's just something that happens, and you do two players that aren't going anywhere that have lengthy contracts and probably won't see the back end of their contract. And all they do is they front load a bunch of money. And they throw them at him, and it just makes sense. And the player will not say no. So this is a, a, a for instance, say you're making ten million the next two years, and they say, Ian, we're going to give you eight million up front, okay, as a bonus, so that gets prorated, so it doesn't hit the cap as much. So that's all the stuff they have to worry about. I don't deal with it, but they're right at the cap, right about maybe a little bit under. Uh, they restructured Vita Vea. Uh, Jensen, uh, Carlton Davis, Godwin, um, and they also cut Donovan Smith and and Leonard Fournette, which we talked to, we talked about earlier. Um, Donovan Smith, I'm going to say thank you to Donovan Smith. I know a lot of people clown Donovan Smith throughout the years, and you're terrible, and you're this and that. Well, let me tell you something. Playing left tackle in the NFL is an is a son of a bitch, okay? And for you to play that long in that conference against that caliber of player, uh, thank you, okay? You you put in your work. But it was time to move on, all right? Uh, He wasn't playing good football when you're the most penalized player in the whole NFL and, and you're not playing good football, then I can't defend you anymore, okay? If I see him out in the streets, I've met him before, I'll give him a hug and appreciation, but... You know, if you sit down and be real with it, the football wasn't great last year and probably into uh, the year the, the, pr- the previous year. Donna Smith played some good damn football, people. Don't don't fool yourself. I think us as Buccaneer fans that we like to look at certain players and think that they're this or that. I had this conversation about Jameis Winston just today, and somebody goes, "Jameis Winston was terrible." I go, "Do you know Jameis Winston is the leading Buccaneer passer in history?" So if he's terrible, then this is a terrible franchise, which it probably is in general, up top to bottom. But you look for what it is. We had, he played left tackle for here for, I don't know, we started nine years. I don't know, it was a bunch of damn years at left tackle, okay? So I'm going to applaud him, but it had to be done. We alleviated, we took some of the cap off. Leonard Fournette, I just think that in 2023 is not the time to be paying a running back, okay? It's not. The Giants just paid Saquon Barkley and they gave him the, the tag. You're not making that much money, but... Don't pay running backs. Never. Paying running backs is ignorant, okay? An equation for failure. Ask the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys have a running back that's making three times more than the backup who's getting better statistics. 
So, so Jerry Jones, you could keep on saying that that was a good move, but uh, that was the beginning of the end to the Dallas Cowboys paying Saquon, saying uh, Zeke Elliott that much money, and forget about the quarterback position. Okay, so the Buccaneers are floating right around the cap, maybe a little bit under, maybe a little bit over, but they're just not going to be a very big mover and shaker. They're not, not in free agency. And by the way, the legal tampering starts today. I don't understand what that means, legal tampering. I mean, that's an oxymoron in itself. I, when I played, I remember having the Jets call me a couple of days before free agency starts. A lot of teams don't give a rat's ass. Uh, but legal tampering starts today. There's going to be a bunch of phone calls happening, and then things will be moving quickly. Not here at Buccaneer land. There's just not going to be a lot going on. We've had the whole discussion of who's going to be the Buccaneers' next quarterback uh, some of the names I care for, some of them I don't care for. But we have to understand that Carl Trask right now is being named the starter. Okay, For me, at the end of it, next year, when training camp starts and when training camp ends, I'm going to say this with a straight face. I hope Kyle Trask is a quarterback. I hope that Trask is our starting quarterback because if he isn't, we wasted our damn time and we wasted a damn pick. Okay, so if he's not our next quarterback and he's still waiting behind somebody and let me say this about people talking about whatever the backup quarterback has to be. In a lot of ways, that's overrated people. Okay, Tom Brady didn't learn that much from Blaine Gabbard. Okay, and when they'll say, well, you know, Trask learned from Brady. No, Trask watched Brady. Those are two different things. Try, you can't learn something about a system if you're not in it. And Kyle Trask has not really been in it yet. I want to see the young kid play, period. We have to understand here as Buccaneer fans, we ain't winning this year. We're not going to win football games this year. I have not seen what Vegas is at, but if it's eight or above, I will bet right now the Bucs don't win eight games, Okay. The Bucs just aren't going to win eight games this year. They're not. They're not. They're not talented enough, and we still we still may lose a couple players. See, like players like Jamel Dean, like we we bitch and moan about Jamel Dean. Jamel Dean's a top five free agent in the NFL this year, and we bitched and moaned about Jamel Dean. Wait till he's gone. Wait till he's gone, and we're depending on Joe Tryon Shreyanka for our pass rush. Then we'll see what that looks like. You know what I think it's going to look like? 45 points a game. That's what I think it's going to look like, unfortunately. So when you talk about the Buccaneers and the next quarterback, I hope it's Kyle Trask. Not because I think he's going to be good. Because I don't really see anybody really excelling in this team next year. I just, I just see I don't see it. But it's it's just your time. Let's see, he was his third string quarterback last year. But did he deserve that? I don't, I don't know. The coaches have to know. They're, they they watch him every single day. They watch him every day at practice. But listen to these names, okay? If it's Trask, we're starting over. From scratch, brand new. I'm hearing Minshew as a name. Every name I'm about to read off, none of them were successful on teams with better talent. Think about that for a second. Minshew had his chances on talented teams. Carson Wentz has had his chance on numerous talented teams. And the reason why they weren't talented is because of him. Jacoby Brissett, that might be a name that I get. Because whoever is going to be that guy, if it's Carson Wentz and you know names like Baker Mayfield are being thrown out there, we have to understand and we have to know that Baker Mayfield's not a leader, right? So why would you launch your back quarterback to be a non-leader type of guy and ruffling feathers? If you bring Baker Mayfield in here, he's going to have to be your starting quarterback because of his personality, not because of his play, okay? Jacoby Brissett, I think, works. Carson Wentz, I don't get. I just don't get why we're still talking about Carson Wentz as a starting quarterback. Drew Locke, another name, I don't know what he's done. Like, what has Drew Locke done for us to be still talking about, you know, Drew Locke as a starting quarterback in the NFL? And between Minshew and Wentz and Brissett and Mayfield and Drew Locke, all those guys 
in the last couple of years have been manning a team with more talent than the Buccaneers are going to have this year. I hope you know that. And people are like, well, the Bucs still have talent. Mm. Where's the speed on offense? Where's the speed on offense? Where's the physicality on offense? What is our mentality? Not, nobody has an answer to any of these questions, okay? I don't, and I watch every damn snap. We don't know what we have. We have we're going to have a new quarterback. We're going to have a new coordinator. We're going to have a new system. Uh, we're going to have new players. We're going to have a new looking offensive line. Um, and the people that we're going to throw back in there weren't that damn good last year. Listen, I want our players to be great. I want them to. I really I really do. I want more from our tight ends. I want more from our pass rush. I want more from our rushing game. It just hasn't happened in a long time. Not a long time. The tight ends were balling a couple years ago. Tight end was not even a position last year. It wasn't even a position for the Buccaneers last year. It was really, to be honest with you, it was kind of sad. So some of the things I've been banting around and people you know, don't know what the Buccaneers are going to do. Let me say, and I listen to a lot of sports radio. And a lot of local sports radio, and this is something people like to throw around there like it's like it's willy-nilly and it's really easy to do. Let's just move Tristan Wirth to left tackle. Now, am I saying that Tristan Wirth can't do it? No, I, I think he may be able to do it. There's no big there's no bigger Tristan Wirth fan on this planet than me. I'm being serious. I think Cindy Kid's an unbelievable football player. Okay. But just to switch is hard. I tried it. I could not do it at the end of my career. Couldn't do it at all. It's almost like swinging the club the different way from right to left. It's all the things that you worked against. For instance, I'm a right guard. My left foot is my post foot. It's got to be up. Always. Your left foot has to. Once your left foot is behind the right foot, you're losing. My left foot has to be up. So my whole life, I worked on my left foot being up. You switched me to left guard. It goes the other way. My right foot has to be up. Now I have to switch things backwards in my head. It's almost like um, uh, backing up a trailer. You ever backed up a trailer before? You can think about it all you want, but you're going to get it wrong six, seven times, okay? It's in your, in your mind, it's just your, your brain is a muscle. And for you just to switch it like that, if they're going to switch them to left tackle, you got to do it now. Like right now, so that he can start his sets, get in some mini camps, see what he looks like, and if it doesn't work, put him back. But don't wait till training camp to say, oh, we're going to move. I, I, I know they're not that dumb. But I'm just saying, just switching somebody's sides, it, just, it sounds so easy, but it's just that transition is not that easy, I'm telling you, okay? And, you know, once we, we talked about Donovan Smith earlier, and, you know, he was a casualty of the cap. But you know what? Last year, go back and look at when the Bucks didn't have Donovan Smith. I'm not sure they weren't better. I'm not sure they weren't better. So losing him is something, but I'm not sure that it's not going to actually strengthen this offensive line. That's real, okay? So our offensive line last year, I, 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 don't, I don't even know what I would grade them. Incomplete. I never, they never really put it in the offensive line's hands. They never ran the football. Never. Passed the football 45 times a game, 50 times a game with a 45-year-old quarterback. To me, a lot of it is very, very, very ignorant, okay? Now, we had a quarterback, Derek Carr, just signed a four-year, $150 million contract, $100 million guaranteed. I like Carr as a quarterback. But isn't it amazing how one organization will bench somebody and another one will give him $100 million guaranteed. Isn't that amazing? One organization had the guy on their roster, and they just let him fade away. Gone. The Raiders stink as an organization. They stink. What a terribly, terribly run organization. Terribly run. And Carr going to the Saints. Now we got to deal with them. We have problems with the Saints anyway, so... We'll see. We'll see how we uh, how it fits in. Now, the NFL is a very reactionary league. All of a sudden, it's the worst thing in the world for this prepared quarterback sneak that the Eagles have been doing. Why are you mad that somebody perfected something? The Eagles perfected something. They perfected that sneak. I love it. 
it's I played rugby. I played rugby in high school. It's a scrum. It's a mentality, and they do it well. Now the NFL wants to ban it. The NFL is funny. You know what I want to ban? I want to ban things that are injuring players. I want to ban things that are hurting players. I don't want to ban things that other people can't stop, okay? It gets stopped. I've seen teams actually stop it. So figure out ways to stop it. One team spent the whole offseason figuring this out, and the other one has to figure out a way to stop it. And if you can't stop it, then do it. But the thing is, nobody's getting hurt. The best guy for the quarterback sneak for years was, was Tom Brady. He just didn't do it in the whole scrum manner, okay? And I heard Peter King say, it's a dumb play. It's not football, it's rugby. So what? So what? To me, that's being innovative. Joe Madden with the Rays was innovative in the shifting and doing a bunch of things to, to benefit and kind of, you know, messing with the rules a little bit. I, I think this is stupid. Every time somebody figures something out, the NFL tries to figure out a way to undo it. And that's that the NFL drives me crazy. Now, let me tell you a little bit about my trip to Indianapolis. Um, NFL hit me up, said, hey, if you want to go in this booth or, you know, in this nice little lounge, it was like the, it's called the N N Legends Community Lounge. It was real nice. Uh, the open bar and drinks and all. I don't drink anymore. Uh, and they had some food there, people hanging out. But it was just a good vantage point to, to watch everybody working out. Like I said, watch, actually watching them work out was boring as hell. It was really more about the surroundings and the experience. Um, as I was walking in the building, trying to get my credentials, I hear the door behind me and I turn my head and I, I look into, I gaze into the face of Jack Del Rio. And we both, like we played against each other quite a few times. And let me tell you something that's weird. I know who he is. I don't, he doesn't know my name. But as we gaze into each other's eyes, something happened. I'm just telling you. It almost happened like we've done this before and we just, li like he literally gazed in my eyes as he walked by and we didn't move eyes and we looked at each other for like 10 seconds and I kind of gave him a nod and he gave me a nod. It was, it was kind of weird. Uh, no, it was good to see a lot of everywhere. Anytime you turn the corner, you saw cool people and that's really why I wanted to go hang out. Um, Jack Del Rey was a tough son of a bitch, by the way. Okay, a tough, tough SOB. Now I went through this combine thing Shit, way back in 1990. So it's a long damn time ago. Uh, what a mentally draining day that is. I mean, what I mean mentally draining, it's a couple days. One is a lot of physicals. Another day, you got to do bench press. You got to do 40. You got to do vertical jump. You got to do broad jump. You got to do physical. Oh, so much stuff. And at the end of the day, you're just, you're gassed, okay? Mentally and physically. These guys... And this looks different now. First of all, they had us out there in some grays. You know what grays look like? Something nobody should ever wear. Some grays with just says XXL on them. They look terrible. These cats here, they got sponsored by a, a new place. No Bull, I guess, is a new uh, line. They were G'd out in that stuff. Stuff was absolutely beautiful. So it was just good to hang out and see some people up in the lounge. I ran into people like, I mean, first, the first I saw was TJ Hushmanzada, I think his name is. Uh, I ran into John Randall. Uh, you know, me and John uh, were actually roommates in Tampa before John signed with the Minnesota Vikings. We were roommates. He was going to sign with Tampa Bay, and Minnesota gave him $5,000 more. So he went to Minnesota. And the rest is history. If he'd have stayed here in Tampa, I don't think his career would end up the same. We talked quite a bit. Uh, I said, why did you go to Minnesota? And he said, well, Floyd Peters was talking about standing me up and being a linebacker, and I just that wasn't his thing. And he went to Minnesota. They ran a 4-3 with Tony Dungy, and it just made a lot of sense. Like I said, the rest, is, the rest is history. That's a bad, bad man. Ironically, the guy running the whole legends community uh, uh affair was will shields uh an old lineman for the kansas city chiefs probably one of the best to ever do it 
So I introduced myself. He says, my name's Will Shields. I said, Ian Beckles, man. We played in the same era. I go, you just did a lot better than I did. He goes, oh, that's not true. I go, no, it's pretty damn true. It's been documented. He does have one of those jackets. And well, we got to talking and about a lot of different things. And I said to him, I got to ask you, who's a, who was the toughest player you ever played against? And he didn't hesitate. He said, John Randall. And I go, how many times you play against him? He goes, just once. And I go, you know how many times I played against John? He goes, how many? I go, 15. He looks at me, he goes, that's 14 too many. I said, yeah, damn right it was. But, I mean, you can go back and look at the film. I, I think I gave up one sack to John in, in 15 affairs. And you, can, you don't have to go back and watch them all. But I do remember crazy things like that. Um, it was really cool. My boy, Martin Mayhew, hit me up. Uh, we did breakfast one of the days. And we're in this uh, hotel where all the, all the muckety mucks were. So Martin Mayhew is the uh, GM for the uh, Washington Commanders. Uh, so I said, what's your title? He goes, I'm the GM. And I go, I didn't even think I even knew he was a GM. I knew he was a high up guy. So we were talking. So everybody that's walking by the table, whether it's Rich Eisen or Adam Schefter, or all those guys, they had to come and say hi. So then uh, Mayhew makes a couple of texts. He goes, Lynch is coming by. So then I'm sitting on the table with John Lynch, who's the GM for the 49ers, and Martin Mayhew, who's the GM for the Commanders. Now everybody in that building got to come to us because you got to figure this. People that are there at the Combine are there to rub elbows with the muckety mucks. And if you want to get a job in the NFL, those are two of the 32 cats you got to sit in front of to talk to. So it was interesting for sure. But looking back at my combine experience from way back when, long ass day, like I remember my numbers. And I, when I watch the combine now, my numbers weren't that bad compared to some of these kids. I mean, I think I ran a 503, which was faster than some D linemen. Uh, I think I did 30 reps with the, with the bench. My vertical was 28. And uh, my thing was my agent, and I, I don't know, it's obviously a lot different now because people watch the combine. The combine wasn't such a big deal back in the day. My agent never really told me what the drills were. So I just like literally got there and found out about the drills. And I think I did okay in the drills. But I don't know if I was prepared enough. But my thing is, I asked John Lynch and I asked Martin Mayhew, how much stock and weight do you put into the combine? And I was really interested to see what they said. And both of them said, it's more for the, for the physicals. It's more for the physicals. Just want to make sure no, everybody's all right. Get in front of them, talk to them, make sure nobody's hiding anything. And there's going to be Anthony Richardson's out there, okay? Why is anybody shocked? Everybody knew he was going to do that. Like, literally everybody knew he was going to do that. And I said, I, I don't know if I said on the, I might have said on the podcast, Watch how everybody reacts and watch what happens. It happens every year. Somebody who can't play, and listen, I'm not a Gator fan by any means. Both my daughters went to Florida, but I watch a lot of Gator football. The one thing Anthony Richardson is not is a good quarterback. He's all the rest of he's got, but he is not a good quarterback. So you're going to take this crazy athlete and draft him in the first round and do what? Wait three years for him to develop and learn the game. We even hear from people like Patrick Mahomes, uh, uh, Russell Wilson. They couldn't read defenses. I know Anthony Richardson cannot read a defense. I know he can't, okay? That's a three-year project. Why would you want to do that? Raw talent versus knowledge to me. I don't know if I rather wouldn't rather Stetson Bennett than my quarterback than Anthony Richardson. I'm serious about that. That talent thing, he can't read no defenses. That speed and all that kind of stuff, it's great. It's wonderful, but it don't win no games for you. It really doesn't. So the, the combine does it every single year. Go back and watch, people. And it, the NFL makes the same mistakes over and over and over. Every year they'll have two or three guys that will just shine above everybody else. And... They are skyrocketing in the draft. Do yourself a favor and go back and watch the old combines and the guys that did that and let me know how they did in the NFL afterwards. 
A lot of them got drafted. Oh my God, his numbers are amazing. He went from a fifth rounder to a first rounder. It never works out. Jeff George was a guy who I think he must have went into the combine a fifth rounder. He came out the first pick. It shouldn't matter what you're doing in your underwears. It shouldn't matter. You have years of film. What the hell should it matter how fast you run in a straight line with nobody else on the football field? To me, it's irrelevant. And to sit there and watch people go gaga goo goo over quarterbacks making throws against air, do yourself a favor. In this day and age with seven on seven, go, go to Platt one day and go watch those quarterbacks throw. Those Platt quarterbacks could throw as well as a lot of NFL quarterbacks. All quarterbacks could make most of the throws, all right? And then this will happen. Look at this ball, him throwing across his body 60 yards. Great. There's only one problem. We don't want you to do that. We don't want you rolling to your left and throwing across your body 60 yards. We don't want, it's nice that you could do it, but we don't have no plays for that. So why do we make such a big deal out of that? If I'm not mistaken, I think Zach Wilson had an unbelievable workout. How did that turn out? You know, how about your maturity? Maturity is an important thing. And having these discussions with Mayhew and Lynch, and I said to him, guys, if I was where you were, I wouldn't even really talk X's and O's. I would just talk about love for football. And I think the one thing that I realize is as I go through the years and looking back at who – I played with and why they were successful. The ones that lasted loved the game of football. They loved the game. Period. That's their life. And then I played with guys that just didn't love the game. They just were talented, but they didn't make it very long. A lot of those guys got drafted way higher than I did, but it just didn't work out. So to me, that's the indicator is your love and passion for the game of football. I've had first rounders that I played with ask me if we were on the, on, in the AFC or NFC. I'll be damned. I love the game of football, and you don't have to ask questions like that from me. I loved it. I've loved it since I was two years old. I think maybe even before that. But please make sure you're listening to my other podcasts. I have one, Mental Intimacy, with the lo lovely Dr. Gina. I have Plant Power, and uh, I just was very blessed to uh, interview Fab Five Freddy, and that's going to be a two-part thing. So doing some big things in a podcast now that I'm away from the radio, and uh, I ain't done with the radio. I'm, I'm podcast daddy now. Uh, you hit me up on Instagram, Ian underscore Beckles, and you can go to YouTube. I have uh, Ian Beckles' show. You can check it out, and you can check out Ian Beckles every darn where all over the place. Everybody have a wonderful week. We'll probably be back in a couple weeks. There'll be plenty going on. Have a wonderful week, and please be safe, everybody. Deuces.